Hey guys, in this video I want to share with you the lessons uh, basically from generating $263,000 with just one product during the coronavirus pandemic and uh, pretty much how everything was leveraged with the advertising for this product and also some of the CBO strategies that you can take and you can pretty much utilize in your own business uh, for getting amazing results. <laughs> last 30 days we've spent $111,000 and uh, we have generated $263,000 in sales and that's only on, on the front end there was also uh, revenue from email marketing some back-end automation and this is with just one product so that's what's the most important here and also the strategies that I want to show you um, pretty much majority of this ad spend was spent within just one CBO campaign here. So um, as you can see here, pretty much this one campaign has spent majority of, uh, it's like 45% of, of all ad spent uh, was in this ad account. And I want to show you the strategy here, the overall like breakdown and how it was uh, structured. The first one here, as you can see, um, pretty much uh, there are like only four ad sets in it. Right, so I, I see a lot of people they would make they would make the CBO with a budget of like fifty dollars uh, fifty dollars a day or like one hundred dollars a day, but then they would pack like twenty assets into it. So the way you have to think about CBO is CBO needs amount of of data and amount of budget in order to properly learn and in order to give you sufficient uh, results and consistency. Because if you have, let's say, $100 CBO, but you have 20 different assets in it, you know, each of those assets would only get $5 uh, per day to spend, right? So let's say you have three creatives in each of those. Then each of those creatives would only get like $1 per day, $1.5 uh, per day to spend. So you have to give it like sufficient amount of data. You can see here, the structure, it is like very simple. We're like with the budget. So the budget is quite high. So the budget is, you can see $2,000 a day, but at the same time, number of ad sets is not that big. So, which means we give Facebook flexibility to optimize and we give Facebook the flexibility to be like more consistent. Because the less ad sets you have, the less complexity you have, the more consolidated your ad spend is the better your result, results will be and the more consistent they will be. When you advertise on Facebook, right? No matter how big your audience is, Facebook will still find the segment in that audience. As you can see, the audience, uh, this the size of this audience is probably like 30, 50 million people. 1 million people reach, but they have been reached with 1.9 million impressions, which means Facebook finds, and the same story repeats here, Right? When people go after like small audiences, like 100,000 people, there's simply not enough space for you to advertise. It's like not, not enough space for you to spend money. So people talk about like laser targeting. I mean, this is all such nonsense. If you have such small audiences and out of that audience, let's say of 100,000 people, Facebook chooses a segment of 10,000 people. And pretty much like in one day, Let's say if you spend like $5,100 for that ad set, you pretty much exhausted that whole audience. So it's very important to keep the audiences open. It's very important to keep them big if you want to, to go for a sufficient scale. And what we do is, um, let's say even if we have those like smaller interests, we consolidate them into bigger ad sets. So let's say we have 10, 20 interests that we have tested that have worked like very well. We basically take those interests and we consolidate them into bigger assets, which mean amount of like budget that we can spend on that one asset will be sufficiently big. So it will be consistent and we give Facebook more flexibility to find the buyers and to find uh, the right uh, people to purchase. So pretty much four assets here, as you can see, $2,000 a day. That's the whole like structure. It is like very simple and it is tremendously, uh, tremendously consistent. So for example, if we take Today's stats, you can see it is like, it is extremely consistent to 2.5 return on ad spend on totally cold audiences. And all of these ads that have performed well, 
you can see here, that's what's important to keep in mind. Keep the budgets bigger and keep the audiences also bigger so Facebook has more flexibility to find you uh, customers. On the creative side, that's what's important and that's what a lot of people are missing. You can see how many different creatives are there. So 32 different creatives. And what's important is that like they spend differently, right? Like not, not all of them have, um, have been like launched at the same time. So what we do is we basically are adding, we basically are adding new ads uh, inside of the existing ad sets. So we maintain that consistency and profitability over time. So that's why one product was able to generate $111,000 in ad spend and we generated uh, 263 just on Facebook because we have so many different craves. So when people say, um, for example, some of my clients or someone just reaches out to me and says, you know, my product doesn't sell, right? Or for example, my product stops selling and I say, okay, how many creatives have you tested? One of my first questions that I, that I ask and, um, you know, person would say, I mean, I've tested like two or three or I tested five. I mean, we test like dozens, we test like dozens of different creatives. We're just like willing to do things that other people will not. That's why we're able to generate these numbers with just one product, $263,000 and, uh, within just one ad account. That's not the only ad account. So, um, this is, this is what I would recommend. So basically simplify your structure uh, for CBO, go after higher budgets and then have more ads on the asset level. So you give Facebook that flexibility that it requires for it to properly optimize, to find you buyers within big audiences. So in terms of logix, the logistics here, guys, so this product is um, in health and beauty space. So we source this product uh, from China. We ship it to customers with, with um, our agents. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for agent for your e-commerce, for your, uh, if you drop ship, um, if you're still in that phase, uh, but if you do good numbers, 30, 50 orders a day, let me know supplier in the comments. I'll share the, the contact with him so you can get in touch, but only if you do like 30, 50 orders a day plus I am, if you do less than that, then, um, he won't be able to help you. So if you do good numbers, good order numbers, if you advanced, um, e-commerce or drop shipping entrepreneurs, then, uh, just, just let me know in the comments. So I'll, I'll connect you with him in terms of logistics. We ship from China. I mean, the shipping times are not ideal. So we offer our clients, you know, gift for their like delays, um, in, in, uh, in time that they're waiting, providing this kind of like incentive for them to not to be aggressive with us in terms of chargebacks and refunds. So, um, and even on Amazon, like even on Amazon right now, if you order something, sometimes you wait for a few weeks to get your order. So it is, you know, problem for many, many, uh, entrepreneurs. Um, so that's what I wanted to share with you. The product itself, uh, a lot of people will probably ask like how, how I found this product. Um, so one of our team members has found this product. Um, we go off the products that have been like validated by other people, but what other people didn't do before us, what we've done on the creative side, I showed you the amount of the creative we test. 32 ads, right? Just in one campaign, just in one ad set, right? So there, there's more than that. Um, I, I guess we are about like 150 creatives on this one. For that, you need like a good process for basically streamlining and creative testing. So if you're looking to streamline those processes, if you're looking to, to scale your business, um, we have, we have uh, a program where we help you to put all of those elements in place so you can scale your business you know, beyond like seven figures and, and start scaling it very aggressively. So if you want to apply for it, there's a link in the description. It's only for advanced entrepreneurs who already done like six, seven figures in sales who want to scale to the next level. Pretty much that comes down to creative testing, properly having the creative stages. So we have different creative testing stages. Um, and we work with people, um, that would provide us with, with custom content. We work with influencers. That's why we are able to hit those numbers and a lot of people are not able to, and we take the product, the same, exactly the same products that let's say, you know, someone else has done, you know, like 50, $100,000 per month, you know, with it or in total. And we take the same products and we're able to squeeze extra like $263,000 out of it. So this is what I would um, recommend for you. If you find the product, streamline the processes with your uh, creative testing, with your con content sourcing, 
with UGC. So you constantly have a new flow of content and then you can scale, even take the same products that other people have been selling, take the same products and scale them aggressively, make extra, you know, 200, $300,000 per month with it. So that's what I would recommend. Um, if you already have that infrastructure in place, then properly utilizing uh, the CBOs and scaling those with uh, bigger budgets, bigger ad sets, and having the flow of, um, of testing and scaling consistently within your business. That's, that will allow you to, to scale during this uncertain time. So this is it, guys. This is for this video. Uh, if you want to help uh, scaling your, your e-commerce dropshipping business, beyond seven figures if you're advanced e-commerce entrepreneur um, then uh, there's there's a link below in the description apply for it and um, we'll see how we can help you out uh, to scale your business to the next level let me know what you think in the comments if you're looking for supplier contact then just let me know in the comments and i'll share it with you and i'll see you guys in the next video